So it seems like everybody and their mother is freaking out over these brand new M1 equipped Macs, and I don't blame them. The level of performance that Apple's bringing with these new, you know, in-house chips of theirs is just insane. And today I really wanna demonstrate that by comparing the few month old early 2020 MacBook Air, the i3 model, which retails or retailed for $899 to the brand new baseline uh, MacBook Air with M1 that I bought for $899, mind you, with education pricing. And we're gonna see just how much better it is through some synthetic benchmark tests. But before we continue here, I'd appreciate it if you leave a like on this video, comment, of course, if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions. And if you are already subscribed, feel free to click the bell icon as it does help the channel out a lot. So on the left here, we have the baseline early 2020 MacBook Air in gold with a 1.1 gigahertz dual core i3 processor, eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage baseline. Apple did away with 128 gigs, thankfully. Uh, and then on the right here, we have the new baseline late 2020 MacBook Air with the new M1 processor, eight gigs of unified RAM and also a 256 gigs of base storage. So we're gonna run Geekbench uh, tests here just to see how much different these processors score in the single core and multi-core dimensions or aspects, I guess. So we're gonna run these tests here side by side and we're gonna see which one finishes first. I can already imagine that the M1 will, but by how much so is the question. Okay, so the new MacBook Air uh, finished the test quite a bit early, I'm like lost for words here. This is unbelievable seeing this coming out of a MacBook Air. Uh, it, it finished the test quicker um, and the i3 is still chugging along here. So with the single core scores, we get 1716, which is more than that of the Core i9 found in my iMac 5K. And then with multi-core scores, we get 7430, which is about a thousand away from my iMac 5K with a 9900K. What? So this is, this is a MacBook Air. This is the level of performance we're getting here because of this new chip and Apple's optimization. That is just nuts. Now uh, the i3 model just finished and yeah, there's quite a difference here. And the absolutely crazy thing here is that these laptops were not launched within years of each other, but mere months. And that just goes to show you why Apple switched to their in-house silicon. I mean, look at the single core scores. They're almost doubled here with the M1 chip. 1716 up from 949. And then the multi-core scores, I mean, there's just no comparison. Although the i3 is a dual core chip, duh. I mean, the fact that you're getting this amount of power for the same price is just once again, really crazy. Now the the MacBook Air is no longer the device where you just do like schoolwork and basic word processing and stuff like that. No, now the MacBook Air is maybe as capable as like a 16 inch MacBook Pro or some of them. It's really awesome to see this and I'm very excited for new usage cases with the MacBook Air. And keep in mind, this new MacBook Air doesn't have a fan anymore. It doesn't need one because the ARM architecture is that much more efficient and it doesn't get as hot. So where you'd have this laptop struggling to open some stuff from open multiple applications and it'd be getting hot, this laptop will probably chug through that. Even if the performance was the same uh, between these two, this chip would still run cooler. And yeah, I mean, that is just crazy to see here. Once again, now the MacBook Air is in MacBook Pro level territory, iPad Pro level territory. And um, yeah, if I haven't already said this, I kind of feel bad for the people who bought the i3 model. Although I do think that this laptop you know, price right is still worth it. Maybe, you know, if you bought it for $500 and you wanted a MacBook to do very basic things then it might be worth it. But um, I will be covering this in a different video where I will be talking about whether you should opt for a heavily depreciated Intel Mac or if you should stick to or buy a brand new M1 chip variant. So yeah, with this out of the way, now let's compare Cinebench scores um, and I got to see if I have to check like an Apple Silicon option or if this is just being run via Rosetta on the um, a new M1 MacBook Air here because as you may know, Apple has a program which allows you to run um, pre-existing DMG based applications or excuse me, like x86 applications. So we'll open these apps here and I'm very excited to see um, how different um, the Cinebench scores are as well. <laughs> oh my God. This is funny. I mean, based off of the Geekbench scores, this makes sense. The single core scores are about doubled or almost doubled with the M1 here. And yeah, you can just see how much more powerful the new MacBook Air is. And I'll let this run out so we can see where it stacks up in this list of scores. 
So the i3 model is still finishing the first pass where the M1 model is now almost done with the second pass. So yeah, double the performance in single core scores. Although there's no number here uh, on this list, you can see where it stacks up with other processors, I think. So that's really impressive here. Let's do a multi-core pass as well, just to demonstrate the dual core versus eight core nature here. So we'll start that in three, two, one and the m1 macbook air is already getting to it it's already uh or the i3 model is lagging behind just a bit even in loading the test uh and <laughs> oh my lord this is not even funny yeah this is where you see like where geekbench is sort of telling as to how this was going to play out i mean 7400 compared to like 20 what is it? I'm trying to even just remember what the number was. Let's go back to Geekbench here. Okay, well, I can't find the numbers, but once again, it was something over 2,000 under like 2,500. So the M1 is surpassing the i3 model on its second pass. <laughs> while the i3 model is still on its first pass. So there you go. And yeah, there really isn't much else to be said. These new Apple Silicon Equip Max are just incredible in regard to performance and hopefully battery life, as Apple has suggested. Of course, it probably will be better. The question is how much better in real world tests, which I will run here because at the end of the day, although the new M1 MacBook Air is just crazy, it might not be for everyone. Someone might wanna buy a used or depreciated i3 model once again for their own use if they're like writing books and stuff like that you don't necessarily need blazing performance to do that so you know i want to cover these more in depth as well and i'll probably mention that again in the outro but yeah this has been a very exciting synthetic benchmark test and uh, i don't think we'll get something like this in a while until there's a next revolution until apple makes another transition to god knows what probably like a quantum cpu or something like that and that about wraps things up here. I hope this video was helpful. Once again, I'd appreciate it if you'd leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions, and subscribe for more content like this. I plan on doing an in-depth real-world performance test between these two laptops to help you decide whether you should opt for a used, you know, probably $500 i3 MacBook Air for whatever reason, or if you should, you know, opt for the brand new M1 variant for the sake of performance and battery life. So we'll be doing testing involving like video editing and content consumption, word processing, anything you can imagine imagine that you could do with these laptops. I will throw at them to see how they react and perform. But anyway, uh, other than that, I will catch you all in the next one.